Hey guys, hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I'm going to create another video. Today's video is going to be about another false teaching. I don't know how many is aware of this, uh, this particular teacher on YouTube. I actually used to watch him all the time. His uh, name is Drew Bloom 34 And uh, I enjoyed this man's videos for a while. You know, he really does a good job of exposing other people. Okay, of false doctrines and stuff. But what he's teaching on this video I'm about to show you guys, it, it's it's false itself, okay? It's a shame that person be going such down, you know, a good path of exposing false teachers, but them, it shows that they are teaching a false teaching as well. Just like on my last exposure video of uh, Charles Lawson, it was, that was, you know, it's a shame that Charles Lawson went from grace through faith to... Backloading works. Well, what we're going to see right here, uh, Drew Bloom 34 and his explanation of James, okay? He's backloading works. He's saying a person must have works. If they're truly saved, that they will have works, okay? Then we know that's false because it's a direct contradiction to Romans 4 5. For him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. What does that say? For him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Okay, it does not say for him that worketh after he is saved, then his faith is counted for righteousness. It says for him that worketh not. Okay, so let's watch a few clips of this video. The video is called Bible Study, period, Book of James. It's on Drew Bloom 34 uh, YouTube channel. Start about the 20 minute mark. He starts talking about you must have works to basically be saved, okay? He's saying works is a condition, okay? So we'll just get down to it. Listen to this, guys. So to please God. It's awesome. All right. We're still in chapter 2, verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show, you, show thee my faith by my works. Very, very powerful. And this is true. And this is why I avoid the whole salvation by works argument. To me, it's not even an argument. Why would you avoid an argument against false doctrine? A born-again believer should not avoid any altercation when it comes to exposing lies. This is our duty as Christians to do so. Okay? Stand up for the gospel. Ambassadors of Christ. We stand up for the truth. We back down to nobody. Of course, we do this in grace and love. We do not do this in attitude or any negative way, shape, or form. But we don't avoid exposing false doctrine. Okay? People who argue that argument are people that don't want to be pinned down by their lack of works. And right there, he's saying that if you say a person does not have to have works to prove salvation, then you're just not wanting to be pinned down by your lack of works. See, this is a, this is a basic argument that lordship salvationists make against true born-again Christians that understand salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. They say, oh, well, you just, you, you're against people having to show works to prove salvation because you have a lack of works. No, we're against that because it's false person does not have to show any sort of works or do any works to prove salvation or become saved. Okay? Because we know that unsaved people can have works. Does that mean they're automatically saved? Well, by Drew's logic here, if a person claims Christ and they have works, then, well, they're automatically saved. That's not the truth. That would direct contradiction in Matthew chapter 7, 21, 23. Okay? All those people had works, but were they saved? No. Why? Because they didn't do the will of the Father. They didn't truly believe on Christ, but they had good works. Okay? They did things in Christ's name. So according to Jews' logic, well, they had works. Well, I guess they're saved. No. This is ABCs in the one, two, threes of faith alone and Christ alone, guys, that he's disagreeing with. He's saying a person must have works to prove salvation. In other words, so if a person has works, I guess they're automatically saved. Nope. That's not the truth. Let's listen. Don't argue. I, I, I'm sorry. Let me say this. Works will not save you. This I confess. But works 
are an absolute condition of faith. And when I say a condition... Okay, there you go. There you have it. Works are an absolute condition of faith. In other words, you must have works to prove your salvation. Or works will automatically, or they, they have to come if you are saved. No, 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 no. If that were the case, anybody that had works, then by Drew's logic, they would automatically be saved. No. Now, I don't know how many of you guys out there are already aware of this. I know uh, specifically one of my good friends on YouTube actually showed me this, you know. And months ago he showed me this and I was just, I was shocked. I was like, man, I used to listen to Drew all the time. I couldn't believe, you know, he believes in losing salvation. He believes that a person can walk away and lose salvation. It's sad, okay, because it's just like Charles Lawson. Okay, it's just like people that seem to be teaching grace through faith, but underneath it all, it's a works-based lordship salvation. Okay, it's just sad. Listen, not a necessary condition. Not a necessary. It's condition. a symptom, if you will, a symptom of your faith. Because if you okay, so if a person has works, that means they're automatically saved. No, 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 no. Unsaved people can do good things all the time. Unsaved people can love people. Unsaved people can uh, go out of their way for people and show charity. Does that mean they're saved? No. But what he's preaching is you must have works to prove your salvation. This is a lie, everybody. This is not true. We all know this, that no grace through faith, faith alone and Christ alone, that works have nothing whatsoever to do with salvation. Okay? Abraham was justified the moment he believed God. He wasn't justified after he offered Isaac. Okay, he was justified by faith, by believing God the moment he believed, okay? And then before man, when he offered Isaac, people could see, okay, you know, justification before man by works, justification by God before God by faith, okay? If you love God, you will do His will, and much of His will... If you love God, you will do His will, okay? What about people that are unsaved, that try to please God? Okay. What about people that are unsaved that do works? Okay. Does that mean they automatically love God? No, it does not. Because first of all, our flesh, things been done out in the flesh, okay? That cannot be brought into trying to prove that you're saved. Because the flesh, an unsaved person can do all kinds of things in the flesh. That doesn't mean they're saved, okay? We love God with our born-again new identity, our born-again spirit. We love God. Even in the days that, you know, your flesh gets the best of you. You may not be doing a thing for the Lord. You may not feel like doing anything for the Lord. Does that mean you automatically do not love God? Your flesh doesn't love God, but your born-again new identity, who you really are in Christ, that is the part that loves the Lord, the true you, okay? But what he's saying here is you must have works to prove you saved, okay? I want everybody to see this, okay? has to do with charity and helping and loving and going out of your way, which just happen to be labeled works, but they, to the people who have faith in Jesus, they're really not works. It's a natural condition. Okay. A work is a work, okay? A work is not a faith, okay? Anything that's not faith is sin, okay? Works is anything you can do rather than faith, Okay? Naturally, yes, by our born again spirits, we love we love the Lord. He is in us. We are in Him. Okay, we are baptized in Christ. Okay, but looking at our works and our physical things, that is not what we look to to see if we're saved. That's what this man is saying. But you must look at your works. Do you have works? Are you doing works? Well, that means you're saved if you are. That's a direct contradiction to Matthew chapter seven twenty one twenty three. And all the faith alone scriptures in the Bible. Okay, guys? This is sad that this man has put out this false teaching. This has been, this false teaching, says you can see, published on August 3rd, 2016. You know, it's been over a year. Okay? And it's just, it's sad. But he's saying you must have works to prove you're saved. That's not the truth, guys. We need to watch out for this. Okay? You know, loving God. And this is why we have to do this because, why? This is why we have to do this. See, you have these basically you have to do works to prove you're saved. Okay. People need help. That's true. People need help. That is true. People are hurting. 
But unsaved people can help people too. So does that mean they're saved if they're helping people? No, it does not. Okay, he's basing his salvation off of his works. Oh, well, you can say you believe in Christ, but let's look at your, let's examine your works. Well, if you examine everybody's works, well, everybody's going to go to hell in a handbasket because nobody is perfect, okay? It, you, it's about faith alone and Christ alone. It's not about what you're doing or what you have done or what you're going to do, okay? That's basically this video, okay? It's not going to per se save you. Works don't save you. That's true. But people need help. See, he's saying, he is saying the truth. Works do not save you. But this is the classic... The classic lie that they're mixing in here is they say, works don't save you, we agree, but you will have works if you are saved. See, that's the classic double talk from the Lordship Salvationists that say, well, we agree that works don't save you, but works are a necessary condition, or they are a condition of salvation. You, In other words, you must have works if you're saved. That is not the truth, okay? Romans, Romans 4, 5, guys. For to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. That scripture right there says, if you have no works, if you're not working, if you have no works at all, no works involved, him that worketh not, but believeth, your faith is counted for righteousness. That's an exact mirror of Abraham, Abraham's faith being counted for righteousness the moment he believed God. Okay, But what Drew would say was, well, no, the works must follow to prove that he said no. You are saved the moment you have true faith alone, Christ alone. You are eternally saved. Now keep in mind, this man believes that you can walk away. Okay, You can lose salvation. Okay, And let's also keep in mind that this man is yoked up with the channel D13, Kip. Okay? I don't know Kip's last name, but the man that runs the D13 channel, I don't know how many people you are aware of that channel, <clears throat> Kip, he, he says that he's graced through faith, but he has this man come on his channels all the time and yoke up with him. Listen, we can't yoke up with people that don't believe the truth about faith alone and Christ alone. Any works heretics, we must not be yoked up with them. Tell them the truth, leave them alone, okay? If they repent, change their mind one of these days, and agree the true 100% faith alone through Christ alone gospel, then yes, you can restore fellowship. Why would you yoke up with a person that is teaching a false doctrine so serious as this? Okay, All the non-essentials, those are non-essentials. We can have fellowship with people that have differences in non-essential doctrines. This is true. But when it comes to salvation, faith alone, Christ alone, the essentials, the true, the, the serious essentials, you cannot be yoked up with a person that does not believe that you are saved by grace through faith alone. Okay, That you are proven to be saved by your faith. You're justified by your faith before God alone. Okay? So he doesn't understand in James it's talking about faith without works is dead, that the faith that is dead, it is still there, but it's not active, okay? He's saying, oh, if you have no work, faith without works is dead means if you don't have any works, you're not saved. Well, that doesn't make sense and it cannot fit in the Bible because many lost people have works. So are you going to have to say that they're saved too, though? Okay, then you're going to have to say anybody that claims Christ is saved if they have works. That's the contradiction. Anyways, I'm going to stop this video, guys. Uh, this is Drew Bloom, 34, false teaching of James, saying that works must follow if you're truly saved, or they will follow, okay? Now, I'm in no way, shape, or form against works at all. We should have works. We should have works. So, the good thing about works, the good thing about living the Christian life, okay, is that you can reach many more people with the gospel if you are... Walk in the walk and not just talk in the talk, okay? That's the thing. That's the thing about James. Why James was so adamant in his book when he wrote it, okay? Was saying, listen, works are essential, okay? I mean, I'm, works are necessary so that you can walk the walk and spread the gospel in the most effective way, 
okay? But what James was not saying is you must have works to prove your salvation. That's not what he's saying, okay? Because many lost people have works. Are they saved? No, they are not. But God bless everybody. I'm going to end this video and just listen, guys. I hate having to make videos like this. I don't like to call strife. But listen, when the truth has to be... The truth has to be shown about these people that are preaching these false doctrines, okay? No matter how you feel, you have to get this out, okay? This is another double talker, okay? He's claiming grace through faith alone, okay? And he even says, we're not saved by works. But he comes in through the back door with, but you will have works if you're truly saved. And we know that therein is where lies the deceit, the deception, okay? Back Another backloader of works into the gospel, guys. God bless everybody. Uh, comment. I'd like to see what you guys would like to say. And listen, if any of you listen to Drew Bloom all the time or anything, just be aware of this and what he believes on this. He believes in the losing salvation. He believes in you must have works to prove salvation, okay? And he twists scriptures to make it try to say that, but he contradicts scriptures in doing so. Okay, guys? But God bless everybody, um, and everybody have a good day. Thanks.